Hello everyone, my name is Oweta Wanomarin, and this is my channel, It Pays to Fear God. This is where we learn about God, His beloved Son Jesus Christ, and their kingdom purpose, the three most important subjects that we can never learn about, talk about, or discuss in the entire Holy Bible, according to John chapter 17, verse 3. The subject that I have prepared for you and myself today is captioned, The Science of Belief. However, before I get into that, I once again have a tune that some of us might be familiar with. Once again, the subject that I have prepared for you and myself today is captioned the science of belief. Belief is essentially the ability to be convinced about something, and I'm pretty sure most of us already know this. And we use this ability a lot more than many of us think. For example, when we are going outside, just taking a walk on the sidewalk beside many cars that are driving on the road, we don't usually think about what could possibly happen, like cars moving outside the road and coming to meet us on the sidewalk. No, we just believe in that fact that cars will remain where they are, humans will stay on the sidewalk. We just believe in that without even really thinking about it. Same goes when we fly on a plane. Human technology has advanced to the state that we don't think about it. We just believe in the fact that the pilot, who we don't even know or see, he could be a drunkard, you don't even know, we just step in the plane and believe in the fact that it will take off, cruise, or fly in the air and land in the destination that we paid for. That's all we really think about. So if we have the ability to believe in that, then believing in God shouldn't really be that hard. Because anytime when you think or hear somebody else talk about believing in God, many of us just feel sad because it's so hard, you know, it's so difficult, but it isn't because we always use that ability when we are walking, when we are in a vehicle, or whatever case it is, we just believe simply because maybe human technology has advanced to that extent, but God should be seen the same way. Many people just don't really have that ability in the sense that they just see God as somebody who can't really exist within their life. They're just physical and God is the spiritual guy who can't really relate. But the ability to believe in God is an act of God. And Jesus Christ said in John chapter 6 verse 44 that no man can come unto me except the Father which had set me draw him and I will raise him up at the last day. An example of when this happened was in Acts chapter 2, verse 37. If you read verse 41, it says that 3,000 people were converted by the teachings of St. Peter and the other apostles. But in verse 37, after Peter the apostle had preached or talked about the majority of his message, the people sitting there looked at all the other apostles and themselves and asked, brethren, what should we do? Because they just heard an outstanding message and they wanted to believe in it. This didn't just happen out of nowhere. No, God touched their hearts. Because the account says that they were pricked in their hearts. They wanted to believe this new message that they just heard. And if we also read Acts chapter 4 verse 4, this continued by Peter the Apostle and the other apostles preaching to more people. And 5,000 people this time were converted. Truly proving that the truth is a very powerful thing. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12. But also... In the letter that St. Paul was writing to the people of Thessalonica in 2 Thessalonians chapter 1 verse 3 and chapter 2 verse 13, he commended the Thessalonians for not being like those other people that were rejecting the message, that were doing all sorts of things. They were believing in God. But we're bound to give thanks always to God for you, brethren, beloved of the Lord. 
because God has from the beginning chosen you to salvation through sanctification of the Spirit and belief of the truth, as that Second Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 13 reads. Therefore, it is important that we understand that when we can't really believe in God, if we're just feeling that, we must pray to God that He can help us touch our hearts. Because people who believe in God are not the proud people, because He resists those people. He doesn't care about such people, but He gives grace unto the humble. First Peter chapter 5, in verses 5 and 6, specifically verse 6, First Corinthians chapter 1, from verses 26 to 29, Matthew chapter 11, from verses 25 to 27, and James chapter 4, verse 10. In order to believe in God, it's not just an act of God. We have to also study the Bible because we can't really believe in something that we don't know. Which is why St. Paul and the other apostles and all other prophets of God have encouraged us to study the Bible. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a work man that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty, he be not a forgetful hearer. But a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. James chapter 1, verse 25. We must consider all the stories in the Bible. Look at examples of people who really believed in God. Because that is the only way that we can actually go and believe in God as well. An example of people who believed in God was in Daniel chapter 3. The three Hebrew men, or boys as some people say. They not only had a good understanding of God, but that led up to their belief because a good understanding of the Bible does lead up to having faith in Him. So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. Romans chapter 10, verse 17. That was why when King Nebuchadnezzar threatened them with the furnace of fire if they did not bow down to that statue that he created, only to honor himself instead of God, they refused. They believed in God's plan. They never seen God before, keep that in mind, but they just believed in the fact that God would save them. And even if he didn't, that doesn't mean that God still doesn't exist according to Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6. That was why they were not refusing, they were not trying to battle against Nebuchadnezzar when they were being thrown into the furnace of fire. And neither did they ever submit to him. No, they were just there and God indeed saved them, bringing the Son of Man, Jesus Christ, to come and protect them in that Daniel chapter 3. And then King Nebuchadnezzar knew that they really did believe in God and that God is truly a rewarder of them that diligently seek him and keep his commandments according to once again that Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6. They show that example. They really did believe in God. Another example of somebody who believed in God was King David. And I'm going to use him actually using the ephod as an example in 1 Samuel chapter 23 verse 9 and chapter 30 verse 7. The ephod was this kind of thing that you would use to communicate with God. It's like how necromancers communicate with the dead. King David used the ephod to communicate with God. And many other kings took decisions without God's consent or permission at all. They just did whatever they wanted. But King David believed that God had the better say in all matters, which was why, not just in these two quotations, but in many other places too, he had brought the ephod because he trusted that God really had the best say in everything. And then they'd have that conversation, not really them physically talking, but just him getting ideas and stuff. It's important we have the understanding that we must believe in God and trust in Him. And what I said before must also apply. Believing God isn't something we're supposed to force on ourselves. Like, we must believe in God. I have to believe. Belief doesn't work like that. It's supposed to be from our own heart, from our own DNA. Because people who can't believe in God won't. You can't force them to. They won't. Same with how people who don't believe in your business, you can't make them believe. It's just not within their interest to because maybe what you want to happen isn't what matches their own belief system. The same goes with believing in God. It's supposed to be from our own sense of judgment and humility that we decide to believe in God because that is the kind of belief that stands. Now, there are people that I'm going to talk about that just can't believe in God, and such people are called the natural man. They don't believe in that idea of worshiping somebody who is bigger than them. And it's not just atheists that count in this, because there are some atheists that generally have good spirits. Many Christians are within this gang of people as well. It is just not within their body system to believe 
in God and his principles. They just aren't within that category. And St. Paul talked about such people in 1 Corinthians chapter 2. If you read it from verse 11, it talks a lot about it, but specifically verse 14, where he stated, The natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, for they are spiritually discerned. People who just convince themselves, tell themselves that, oh, you know, I can't, I don't want to believe in God. They will never believe in God because Satan will keep feeding them with things that will keep holding them back. And proud people are another example of natural men. They don't feel like God exists. They just think that he's a theory. He's a fantasy. He's a conspiracy. This is not how belief works. In my introduction, I talked a lot about this. Belief does not have to come from us seeing things before believing them, because that obviously isn't hope. Romans chapter 8 and verses 24 and 25. And one big obstacle, besides what I've just talked about, that can really prevent belief is something called delusion. And in case we're not aware of that, delusion is like something that can prevent you from really knowing the truth. And the Pharisees are a great example of a group of people who were deluded before God. And we see this because they were vast in the scriptures. When it comes to genealogies, when it comes to the lineage, they knew everything. If people made errors, they knew exactly where they were. Like, for example, if somebody said, Noah came after Abraham, no, 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 that's not how it works. They would be able to correct such things, and even closer things. But when it came to the important stuff, they failed because they put more emphasis on the physical stuff and the spiritual stuff because they could collect all of that and benefit from it. Matthew chapter 23, if read it from verse 13 all the way to verse 39, where Jesus Christ criticized them that you cannot be doing this and still be calling yourselves real Jews before God. They were deluded because they didn't know what was coming in Luke chapter 19 from verses 41 to 44, where Jesus Christ had been talking about them. Not just them, but also the people that would follow them, because, of course, people like that have many followers, according to Isaiah chapter 9, verse 16, and they get deceived as a result of that. They did not care about what Jesus Christ was saying. This was the person who was going to send them that message that if you don't listen to what I'm going to say, the Romans are going to come regardless. They had to escape, essentially, so that the Romans wouldn't kill them. But because they were deluded, they would hear the truth, but it wouldn't make sense to them. They just said, ah, forget it, we'll stay in Jerusalem and keep praying, because maybe praying had helped them before. But of course, because God was just done with them, the judgment came regardless. They cocked their ears. They were dull of hearing, as Jesus Christ told them, and also the others that you know followed them once again. According to Matthew chapter 13, from verses 15 to 17, uh, Matthew chapter 15, from verses 7 to 9, and Isaiah chapter 6, in verses 9 and 10. They cocked their ears. They didn't want to hear anything besides what they themselves believed was the truth. And such people will never get to believe in God. Pharaoh is another example of somebody who was deluded. He kept hardening his heart despite all the obvious warnings and plagues that were gradually ravaging his land and bringing his land to nothing. But because he was deluded, he just kept hardening his heart and refused to let them go until finally God performed the tenth plague of the firstborn of every single creature that existed died. And then God started to take the step back and that was when he let them go. But his land was ravaged and destroyed as a result. We should never allow Satan the devil to delude us, just convince ourselves, oh, whatever. Because the moment they come into our lives, there is no more way of stepping back. Because by the time they're done with us, there's nothing in us left. And they can step back, start laughing, and will only be humiliated. It's very important we don't fall into that trap. Help all of us have the understanding now what it means to believe, the science behind that idea. Because belief isn't just in the mouth. It is from your heart wanting to support such ideas. And that is what it really means to be a Christian. And it is through such belief that we can go do the works that it's supposed to lead to. James chapter 2 from verses 14 to 26. And it is only such ideas of belief that can actually be kept to the end. Because it is only the belief that is kept to the end that will actually be justified before God. Cast not away therefore that confidence which hath great recompense of reward. 
For ye need patience that, after you have done the will of God, you might receive the promise. Now the just shall live by faith, but if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. For we are not of them that draw back unto perdition, but unto them that believe to the saving of the soul. Hebrews chapter 10 and verses 35 and 36 and verses 38 and 39. Because without all of this, it is impossible to worship God, keep His commandments, and inherit the various rewards that He has promised to them to do so. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6. And I choose to end my talk on the subject, the science of belief. To conclude this episode, I once again have a tune that some of us might enjoy. Hope you enjoyed this video. Hope you learned something most importantly. Please try to subscribe and share this video because this science of belief is as big as the science of biology, of chemistry, all other branches of that field. And it is important that we understand it in detail so that we can go and live those kinds of lives strengthened by belief. Thank you for listening.